Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Shipper versus Logistics Service Provider, Differing Transportation Management Perspectives. The webinar is hosted by DC Velocity and sponsored by Descartes Systems, LLC. My name is Mark Solomon. I'm Executive Editor of News at DC Velocity, and I'm your moderator today. Uh, before we begin, a few housekeeping announcements. Uh, this webinar is designed to be interactive between you and the presenters. Later in the program, we will ask for your feedback. You can participate in the Q&A session by asking questions about the information presented in this webinar at any time. Just type your question into the Q&A text box located below the speaker bios on the left, and then click the Submit button. We will answer as many questions as time permits after the presentation. The slides will advance automatically throughout the event. You can download a PDF copy of the presentation by clicking on the Resources button in the bottom left of the console. At this time, we recommend that you disable your pop-up blockers. If you experience any technical issues, please visit our webinar help guide by clicking on the help question mark icon on the bottom right of the console. If slides are not advancing, please press the F5 key on your keyboard to refresh your console. Now on to the presentation, Shipper versus Logistics Service Provider Differing Transportation Management Perspectives. Discussing today's topic, Chris Jones, Executive Vice President, Marketing and Services for Descartes. Chris, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mark. And I'd like to open this uh, session by uh, saying that uh, we're going to do our own version of Mythbusters here today. Um, a lot of uh, conversations I've had over the years in terms of uh, differing uh, perspectives or perceived differing perspectives between uh, shippers, typically, if you will, manufacturer and retailer, distributor, and an LSP, a 3PL, or a, or a forwarder as an example. And, and so what we decided to do as part of the overall benchmark study that we did earlier this year was, was take a look at the, the answers that we got from those two respective uh, communities, and that's really what we're going to run through uh, today. So there are four pieces to uh, the, today's agenda. Um, a little bit about who we surveyed, uh, some of the key trends and practices that uh, we observed and how people are reacting to those, uh, the strategies and tactics that shippers and logistics service providers are using, and then the technology implications to all of it. Uh, we've got a lot to cover, so I'm going to move fairly quickly here. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, obviously, please get them down. Um, and we'll do our best to answer them at the end or even uh, afterwards. So just up front, you can see that uh, we had 220 respondents to uh, the survey. And you can see the breakdown of the different kinds of uh, companies here. Uh, a little over 70% were shippers, again, manufacturer, retail, distributor, and the 3PLs and forwarders represented about 30%. And you can see the, the breakdown in, in colors uh, on this particular chart. Now, as we looked at this also, we, we wanted to understand really where these people operate. And so the question we asked is, where are your operations? And we, what we meant by that was, you know, you may be U.S.-based, but do you have operations in Europe, Asia, uh, Latin America, et cetera? And then you can see that there's a little bit of difference in a couple places, but in general, um, what I'd describe as shipper versus LSP, uh, it's actually fairly balanced uh, across the globe. Um, as far as transportation modes go, uh, you can again see, uh, and no surprise probably to anybody, uh, that it's more heavy over the road. Um, and then you move out into um, some of the more, I'll call it unique modes, uh, parcel, ocean, air, they, they drop down. Um, there's a little bit of variation here, but quite frankly, uh, not a much to make a difference uh, uh, in, in terms of the respondents and uh, the modes that they operate in. And as you saw in the previous slide, and the geographies they work in as well. So one of the things that we did, is for anybody who attended the, the previous um, webcast we did on, on uh, transportation management, was we, we asked a number of questions and we broke down the answers to those questions 
across all the various other questions that were there. And so two of the, the perspectives that we took was, you know, what is management's uh, view of the importance of transportation management? And that's this top uh, left chart. So you'll see throughout this presentation we talk about competitive um, and basic or necessary, um, uh, actually even necessary evil you'll see in some places. Um, and uh, uh, the idea here was that we were trying to look at the extremes. You know, what do people that view it as critical to their success and others who don't care, how do they think and act? Equally, we looked at how well our company is doing financially, and, and this was a, a subjective question. We, we asked people to rate their own company, um, and again here, were they doing very well being industry leading, or we called mid and below, basically those folks at best keeping up um, with their market, and in some cases uh, going backwards. So again, a good perspective um, to look at. So what did we find? This is some of the interesting pieces. Well, if we look at the following things here, we find out that when we looked at a, uh, a company from their strategic uh, view of transportation and we graded them on how well they did uh, financially, so you can see the blue bars, the light blue bars being what we call shipper leading, so they're, in other words, leading financial performance, and LSP leading, you can see that they're the ones who believe uh, more so that um, uh, uh, transportation management is a competitive weapon. Equally, when we flipped that around and we looked at it from the perspective of how well is your company doing and grading it by, uh, how, you know, how they felt, um, uh, uh, you know, the importance of transportation was, you can see those people with industry-leading performance and certainly with better than average performance tended to be uh, those folks, again, who placed more importance both as a shipper and a logistics service provider on transportation management. So again, this is something that we saw in the original study that we did, but when we broke it down at this level, again, it really kind of reinforced that. The other way to look at this particular chart is those people that either don't think it's important at all or really aren't growing very well, they are on the right side of the chart, largely speaking, and right in this case is not good uh, across the board here. So uh, just something to keep in mind, and you'll see this as we go through the rest of this uh, session. Now, another key thing we did, we asked them how they're going to grow, and you can see it's broken down into uh, five areas. Let's call it more aggressive growth on the left and, and actually going backwards on the right. And if we look at it again from both the uh, uh, shipper and LSP, that's those two particular charts, shipper always being on the top, and you'll see this through the entire presentation, and LSP on the bottom when they're separate charts. You can see the folks, again, who uh, either believe it's more important to them, competitive advantage, or have leading financial performance as a shipper are more represented on the left. It's the same thing with LSPs, if you look down below, just a slight variation uh, in it. Uh, and those folks, again, who do not believe it's uh, important to them, uh, or uh, they're not doing very well, they're all the low growth organizations. And I think this is an important you know, message for everybody to take away here is that when, you know, when we put this study together, we ask these questions and we don't ask them in sequence. So it's not very easy for people to, to kind of game the system here. But it's very interesting to find out the, how much correlation you see between, I'll call it, importance of transportation, financial performance, and growth. Um, so something to really keep in mind here. And it's going to be something we will talk about later, especially when it comes to getting uh, transportation management initiatives approved. So now let's talk about some key trends and practices. And the first thing that we did here was uh, look at the, the overall market, and we asked people, you know, with the kinds of changes that are out there, regulatory, industry, and so forth, you know, which ones are driving it? You can see the different um, areas that we asked people to comment against, and we told them to pick two. Um, what was very evident, both in the original study and here, that uh, driver shortage was the number one thing by far, uh, hours of service. Um, and again, this particular chart is sorted by shippers' uh, greatest answer on the left and lowest on the right, but it ties in very closely with LSPs. You can see that hours of service and driver shortage, or what I would call capacity issues uh, in the market, are, are a big deal. All right? And so um, it's important to um, uh, keep that in mind here. Equally, uh, you see the next two things are what I would call e-commerce. Uh, and e-commerce related issues, both pure e-commerce and home delivery, 
uh, you know, are on the rise. Um, again, you see their impact in both uh, shipper and LSP uh, being you know, fairly equal. And then one other one I'd point to here that's on the chart um, really probably as the number three thing overall uh, when I count up between shippers and LSPs is uh, carrier financial health. Um, you know, that's still a big issue out there. I think there's still a lot of impacts that people think about from last year. And in general, uh, particularly in the ocean community, uh, this has been a challenge, um, uh, you know, and, and something that people have to keep in mind. All right, so then from there we said, okay, what drivers, what business drivers are resulting in the expanded use of transportation management? And, and the way to think about this one is, um, you know, what's causing your organization to rely more on transportation management, do more in transportation management? And, and we had a number of, of answers, um, uh, options that we put down there, but the top three were pretty consistent and they were by far the lion's share of the answers. And you could see them um, in, they're you know, in slightly different order, but number one is always business growth. And I thought this was incredibly important. And again, if you look at it from the folks who as shippers view themselves needing transportation for competitive advantage or leading financial performance, again, they're more shifted to that growth side of it. The ones who are laggards are more shifted to the cost side of it. Um, and obviously improved customer service is uh, key for all of them. So I think you know, there's some balance here. There's a little difference uh, between uh, shippers and LSPs, but, but overall, um, these are the, the big items here. And again, the people that care and the people doing well tend to be focused more on, I'll call it the, uh, the growth side of the factor. All right. On the next one uh, chart that we have here, um, this is something where we ask people how and do you manage, measure the value of transportation? And we kept it fairly generic here. And, and there's probably a lot of nuances in this, but the best way to think about this is on the left side, you know, let's start with the top chart, you, you talk about cost per delivery. Let's just talk about cost. On the, on the next one, okay, you're really talking about classic customer service, all right? The next two really get outside of the, of the logistics world or supply chain world. These are things that are really tied to the overall performance of the company, all right? And that's contribution to revenue growth and then contribution to competitive differentiation. So are you winning based on transportation management? Why those are important, and you're going to see this later, is if you're not measuring those, and you can see some huge drop-offs here uh, in terms of what people are measuring, particularly for shippers, um, is that you're really not capturing the complete value of transportation. Transportation goes well beyond um, the, what's called the transportation department, the logistics community, even supply chain. It's customer impacting. All right, and many businesses these days, particularly in retail, it's becoming, uh, when you look at home delivery, part of uh, uh, success of a number of, of uh, retailers out there. All right, there's a little bit more balance in the LSP space. When you look at this, the first three, um, I think overall LSPs are doing a little bit better job there. I would say one of the reasons why they are doing a better job is it's their business, uh, and they're much more focused on it, particularly around sales. Notice, though, the drop-off in competitive differentiation. Again, this is a place where I think people need to do more homework to really understand what value they're bringing. And quite frankly, if they're not, uh, to really kind of challenge uh, maybe their approaches to transportation management, uh, because it's certainly being used by a lot of companies today to uh, put, uh, bring an edge to their organization. On this particular slide, um, we talk about the use of transportation uh, information, all right? So if we said in the previous slide it's important to measure these things, it's who's sharing and getting that data, um, and, and why, again, is this important? So if you, again, start at the top, you look on the left, it, this goes from, let's call it, in the four, four walls of transportation all the way out to, let's call it the extended supply chain um, and, uh, and organization, you know, the ecosystem. Um, and if you notice that uh, shippers, again, uh, a, a, an okay job, really, of sharing it in the supply chain space. But when we get to things like sales and customers, look at the drop-off, and particularly for those people that don't use it strategically, or don't think about it strategically, or, or not growing very well. They aren't doing a very good job there. And this is, as we talk about things like customer satisfaction and making a difference, uh, a lot of times people think it's about the physical movement, and the answer is it absolutely is, okay? But people want to know where their stuff is, and they are making decisions based on that. So your inability to share that information is really hurting um, 
Equally, if you're not sharing with the sales organization, and let's face it, in the vast majority of companies, the people that own the customers drive the business. All right? And there's value in that. And so getting them to understand what that value is is critically important. Now, if you look down at LSPs, you'll see I, I circled it in green there, or, or green box, if you will. And you notice that the LSPs do a much better job because it is so important for them to be able to get out there and, and sell and keep their customers. But it does drop off, again, when you start looking at those people that, uh, when you actually talk about sharing with customers themselves, um, when you get to people, again, who don't think about this uh, transportation in the bigger picture. Now let's move on to strategies and tactics. So given some of the things we've seen about the market and how people think, um, what are they really doing? In this particular case, um, we, we ask people about competition. Uh, this is very eye-opening. Transportation is such a dynamic area. People are reinventing uh, delivery models, uh, uh, ser uh, service approaches, and so forth. And so we, we asked across a number of different things. And so what you see here is uh, um, two breakdowns, again, the shipper and LSP perspectives on uh, their, their competition. So if you look really, let's start with the shippers. Let's look at the first two things, faster deliveries and free shipping. Um, to me, this you know, really speaks to what I call a consumerization of transportation and, and consumer expectations basically flowing <laughs> over to the B2B world as well. Um, you know, uh, as I think we all know that, that this has been a big challenge, particularly uh, for retailers and, and and you see this in home delivery and so forth. All right. And then as you move down to LSPs, you see a slightly different approach. And why I say slightly different is um, value-added services are, you know, again, a key thing. If we look at home delivery, it could be things like installations and so forth, um, or other services related to trans uh, round transportation, uh, providing shipment visibility, um, is really important. If you notice, it's sort of important for shippers, but more so here maybe for the logistics community, um, a little bit more so anyway. Uh, and why I say these are a little different is this is uh, logistics service providers are essentially working with shippers. So um, you know, these are classic what I describe as uh, LSP uh, focuses. Um, and uh, you know, when we think about things like uh, faster delivery, if you notice that's that's number four down the list here for uh, an LSP. Maybe something that they're starting to see more of, um, but in reality, it doesn't really kind of come to the top of the heap. You know, again, it's the it's the who's your end customer that I think that really drives this. Now, one thing I would say, if you notice things like disruptive technologies, it's interesting that you don't really get a feel for it in in the um, shipper um, side of the world, but more so, I think in LSPs. Um, uh, you know, maybe there's a fair amount of market hype that's out there, but I do think if you get past things like drones, et cetera, that there are a lot more uh, uh, disruptive approaches. And then obviously, you know, if you're an LSP, this is what you do, and so therefore there's more heightened awareness of it. All right. One of the other things we also look at is um, how do you deal with transportation strategies? All right? not, not every organization works the same way. You have what I describe as early adopters or those bleeding, bleeding edge organizations all the way back to you know, what we've been doing for the last 20 years works and we're just going to keep doing it. And so what you see here is on the left is uh, looking at shippers. And you can see that um, uh, there's, a, again, a fair amount of the more aggressive ones, those that believe in competitive advantage or better financial performance, uh, tended to be more on that leading edge side. Now, when you look at this um, from the LSP perspective, um, it's even more so skewed here. And uh, you know, um, I'll just say I would like to or love to have some comments coming in uh, and to see what uh, shippers' perspectives are um, on that. I, my own personal opinion is I think it's a little over optimistic uh, uh, based on my own. Uh, experience in the marketplace, but I'm not the judge on that ultimately. I'd love to hear what people have to say. But again, here, what's most important is what, what showed up. And uh, uh, so there's much more emphasis, I think, more so than ever on being aggressive given how dynamic transportation management has become. So we talked before about change in the, in the previous uh, section. And, and so obviously what we wanted to know was what are people doing to prepare for those regulatory industry changes. Uh, what was probably most uh, 
interesting or most shocking uh, in the uh, original study, and it's really shown itself here, is that the number one thing was invest in technology. Uh, when you look at transportation management, the, it's a multi-party process. So much of it these days is enabled by uh, technology to make it run faster, to provide better visibility. I mean, we could just go through a smarter consolidation and so forth. So many things are tied to that. So I'm not necessarily surprised to see that. And again, this may tie into what LSPs had said on the previous chart, which is um, they're going to be more aggressive in new, uh, new, new strategies and tactics related to transportation management. And so many of these days are being technologically enabled. Um, so uh, I think that ties in there. Again, you can see changes in transportation strategy itself is kind of, if you will, floats in the same space as cutting costs. Cutting costs is always out there. Uh, but it was amazing to see that, that by itself that really wasn't the top thing, although you could say many investments in transportation technology will actually help that as well. Um, you know, from there I think it falls off, uh, you know, uh, fairly normally. On this particular slide, what we looked at was um, strategies and tactics for improving transportation values. So what are people doing specifically um, to um, raise the value of the transportation for their organization? All right. So if you look at these two charts here, we'll start with LSPs. Um, the overall, they're more focused on automation. Again, ties back into the technology investment and for better customer service here. So, so I think that those are things that really tie together, um, if you will. And so as you look at that, that's things like, if you can see, automate transportation to react faster to customer needs, offer high value services, all right? And then if you notice, cost cutting here uh, was their fourth priority. And I thought that was uh, very, very interesting. Uh, it's a tough market, LSP market is a tough market. Uh, margins are thin. You hear a lot about it. I, I think it's still out there. Um, but in terms of, uh, I'll describe it, maybe even how it's going, going to be addressed. It's not the pure just try to cut your costs. It's maybe be better, smarter, faster uh, in a way to do it. Um, and then uh, shippers are more, a little more focused on cutting costs here. I find this interesting. Uh, maybe even a little conflicting with some of the approaches that were mentioned before. But again, there's so much pressure out there in, in this particular space. Uh, uh, those people who are, again, laggards, uh, and by my definition, those that don't think it's uh, a big deal for, for transportation management or aren't doing as well financially, they're the ones that you can see this, the, how the line of, that, uh, of uh, those four answers there going up as they really move to people who are, if you will, just not very much focused on it. Equally, on the flip side is the more aggressive things like automating transportation and so forth. All right. So on this particular uh, uh, slide, we had said to people, what do you need to have to run your business? And we said, give us all the ones that you need to have here. So there's a whole litany of things that are here, and there's actually even more that I'm going to get to in a second that are not even showing up on this particular chart. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a second, too. And uh, you can see visibility was the number one thing, priority. Um, and interestingly enough, BI dashboards uh, come into play here. Uh, for LSPs, and we're going to talk more and more about that as we go along. Uh, that's going to be a big deal. Uh, we, we believe, uh, you know, visibility into what you're doing, and, and again, because this is a multi-party process, visibility across the, the supply chain and how transportation is impacting, it's going to be a big deal. Now, notice what didn't show up in this chart. Fleet routing, parcel management, auditing, dock appointment scheduling, logistics messaging networks, and yard management were basically six things that we asked people about it, which we did not get a lot of uh, uh, input on it. So I thought it was very interesting. I would describe this as more with a, what we would call classic TMS approach as opposed to more of an extended uh, or advanced uh, transportation management. Now, on this slide, we said to people, okay, where are you focused specifically on improvements um, around transportation management? So, Tying back into what we've seen before, visibility, number one, all right. Again, you can see there's a wide range here. And even the top, you know, um, ranked item is only in the 30% range. Um, and uh, if you notice for um, uh, TMS for, is also big in cost reduction, what I call, um, those are things like the classic rate, rating and carrier selection, consolidation, and load building are really heavily driven around those kinds of things. Now, what's also interesting here is that um, 
uh, when we looked across these, and I didn't do it in this particular chart, there's just, just throw too much data up, is that top performers um, uh, do even more so in this particular case by an average of 10%. So if you took those charts and raised them up another 10%, this is what you particularly would see the more importance uh, in these areas. Uh, again, improvement focus where it's not happening, fleet routing, parcel management, audit, dock appointment, yard management, um, not on this particular chart. Again, much lower than these areas. Uh, um, you know, my only uh, point that I would make there is I believe that, uh, you know, this is a, a missed opportunity of people are really kind of putting what I call TMS into, into, the, um, uh, into the, the small TMS bucket here, you know, traditional over-the-road carriers, et cetera. Uh, as opposed to the broader um, transportation infrastructure that you might be running, um, whether it's yourself or with your private or dedicated, excuse me, carriers and so forth here. Equally, controlling the flow of, of goods in and out of DCs uh, really is as much a transportation function, and many people believe it's just warehousing, but it's actually about uh, the flow of goods. All right. So the last section here, technology implications. Um, what we did here is we really looked at all those things that went on before and we said, okay, let's uh, see how, for instance, we, we do with uh, technology adoption strategies. We talked about logistics strategy adoption, right? Now we're talking technology. So if you notice here, this is a classic, you know, uh, view of the world. You have early adopters back to laggards. You can see no surprise here with shippers. The, the, the ones that show up as leaving as competitive advantage. They're, they are ones that will jump on new technology. Uh, I think if you go back to those slides, which we could do later, people ask questions about it. You're going to see the same thing there. It really mirrors it. Uh, middle of the pack is not a bad answer here. Uh, I think that's an incredibly honest answer that you're seeing there uh, by people. And then you can notice laggards, okay? Laggards, again, uh, it's not a priority, and, uh, uh, you know, or they're not doing very well financially. Um, it's a little bit different skew uh, with logistics service providers, but um, it's, uh, you know, pretty much the same message here. So, you know, I think that, uh, um, you know, one of the big concerns I have here is when you look at this versus their strategy adoption, uh, it's not nearly as skewed to the left for LSPs here. So I think, uh, you know, this gets back to my comment earlier about uh, whether or not LSPs uh, are actually going to be able to execute everything that they, they said they want to go do here. So. This is something that's really important. Um, on the next slide here, uh, we've got uh, uh, spend. Okay, how well is uh, or how much is spend going to move over the next two years? Again, an important indicator of you know people literally putting their money where their mouth is. So transportation is really important. What you're seeing here is on the left uh, on both these charts, uh, even more skewed for LSPs. Uh, those people that I think important or they're doing better financially, they're going to be the ones doing more of the investment. Uh, those folks that don't, they tend to be more to the right. And I think what's important to understand here is that, you know, particularly if you do believe that transportation technology does play heavily, um, is over time we're going to see a gap between those people that aren't focused on it and those that are. I think we've seen this in a number of marketplaces already, uh, you know, some leading people in retail and some other markets uh, that um, have really, you know, used it to their advantage. Um, and obviously you've got to spend money to go do it. Uh, it should return more than its fair share of benefits, but uh, equally here, you know, I think the message is pretty clear. Okay, now another key one, and this is one that was, I think, very telling uh, to me was we asked people about, you know, what obstacles they have to investing in TMS. And, and let's do this, uh, best way to describe it is, if you took the study, you would have noticed that there was a couple of answers like payback not clear, not a priority, all right? And then there was another answer. And other, when we actually broke it down and we looked at all the answers we got, all right, said basically that every one of those people uh, that responded said, we're already implementing, have implemented, you know, and so forth, adding, doing more. They aren't having an issue, all right? There aren't any obstacles for them. But look at that. That's only a relatively uh, um, low number of people here. 20% um, for shippers, 36% overall for um, LSPs. All right, not a priority. You can look at that was a top issue across the board at 36%. Um, but equally, um, 
payback not clear. Um, that to me, you know, when you take those two and you add those together, uh, they really say that uh, um, that people aren't really understanding the complete value. And what, this is one of the reasons why I said early in this presentation, hey, you've got to look at where you share your information. You've got to look at how you measure value in, in transportation management. And, and you could tie these things together here uh, very much so. Um, the last comment I'm making is that, you know, what I, what I see out of all of this is what I call a huge uh, executive education gap. Um, and, you know, the classic uh, challenges that uh, transportation management organizations or supply chains have is turning their uh, value into something that CEOs care about, all right? And that's why I talk about customers, customer value, competitive differentiation, revenue growth, all those things are, you know, the things probably most focused on by uh, executive management. So, again, here, the minute you start bridging those gaps, the, the less obstacles people have, and those two that are mentioned here as being payback and priority, uh, they go away. Okay, so, again, looking at really where people are going, so how they're describing themselves and so forth, um, uh, and, uh, uh, Greatest value for the next two years in transportation management. Uh, you can see here, okay, um, that uh, these are the top four uh, out of about eight, eight or nine choices that we have. So I think probably no surprise for um, most of this audience. This is classic TMS um, capabilities for the first three, okay, rating and optimized planning, visibility, uh, execution. If you notice performance analysis coming in here, number four, and I'll just say we're going to see more of this in the next couple of slides, um, there's a big, big focus on, on understanding what their people are getting from uh, their, their TMS solutions and, and so forth. So we're, you know, I think this is going to be something that people should keep in front of them um, going forward. I think we'll see a lot more examples of how to exploit uh, the value of TMS much more broadly than the transportation organization. Okay. So now let's take that and say, where are they going to invest for the next two years, given that's the importance? And, and the reason we ask this question is because there's not always alignment between what they say they're going to do and then where they're going to go uh, spend their, their time and money. If you look at it again, it's the same four areas here, maybe slightly twisted, visibility of top player, rating and optimized planning, uh, and again, performance analysis here. So huge, huge um, uh, uh, it, uh, you know, tie-in, I think, to uh, um, what we've seen both today and where people are going over the, over the future. So let's just bring this one to a close here, rip through a lot of different things. Uh, I think that the, you know, if we looked at this overall, there's like 20-some slides worth of analysis there. You see the following, which is, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, um, you see the, uh, you see the difference is not very great between uh, LSPs and shippers, all right? And that, um, you know, the numbers are plus or minus a couple areas in particular, but they tend to really follow themselves very, very well. The real difference is in that whole notion of management perspective and, uh, and uh, financial performance. Um, you know, top performers um, basically are much more prone to do way better, grow their business faster, um, and you see that in all the different actions and activities that they have underway. All right. Um, another key point that came out of this uh, very, very clearly is technology uh, as, a, as, a, as an investment strategy is really at the top. It was reflected in really numerous different ways in here, and it, it really talks to the importance of technology in, in enabling transportation management strategies and tactics. And I think the thing I, I would say here is that you know, technology by itself is not the end all, but is really being recognized as a key enabler. All right, and then uh, no surprise, we saw that because of all that TMS uh, spending, IT spending is going to go up. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be critical. And again, the people who are going to take the lion's share of it are the ones who are the most aggressive uh, in the marketplace. And then last thing really is that you know, uh, this whole notion of understanding the value of transportation is still a big issue out there. Uh, you know, I would just say people need to really rethink their approach to uh, measuring it, where they're sharing that data, uh, and ultimately uh, translating that into things that uh, the C-suite cares about. So with that in mind, I'll turn this back over to Mark. Thank you, Chris, for an excellent, informative, and very important 
presentation, especially in today's marketplace. As a reminder, as we begin the Q&A following the presentation, we ask you to fill out the feedback form that is presented as an icon at the bottom of the console. To complete the form, please press the quote unquote submit answer button at the bottom of the page. Thank you in advance for filling it out. Your participation in the survey allows us to better serve you going forward. And now on to the question and answer portion of our event. Um, as a reminder, to participate in the Q&A, just type your question into the text box located below the media player, and then click the Submit Question button. So um, we encourage and welcome and hope for a robust audience presentation and the or participation, excuse me, in the few minutes we've got left. So uh, let me start, Chris, by going back to one of the uh, slides. So I've talked about 36% uh, of, of respondents did not see uh, TMS as a priority. That's a fairly sizable portion. Uh, how do you break that ideological logjam? Uh, well, that, let's do it this way, Mark. It's a great point. I, I think that here's the – it's ideological, okay? Uh, for a lot of people, uh, they view it as get it done, all right? And I thought this was, a, it was incredibly um, – people were incredibly honest about their, their management's perspective of the organization. Are they really doing uh, and looking at transportation to add value to the organization? There's a lot of traditional companies I would – tell you without mentioning any industries that get anybody too angry, but where, you know, they view themselves, they, they use the term brand, okay, and brand is about the image and the, maybe the product, but yet in so many markets, it's the other way. If you're really in a distribution-centric market, you know, things like transportation really matter. So why is it matters? Because they're selling products that maybe other people are selling, all right, now it's all about the service. They really compete on the service. So, you know, this is why, you know, you see this uh, out there. So certain industries drive it. And then, again, there's this classic belief, depending on where the executives came up in the organization, without any other education, they don't, they attribute it to, uh, you know, uh, I made it, it's brilliant, get it there, you know, type of thing. As a follow-on to that question and response, there are challenges within an enterprise to get TMS projects approved. Is there a protocol or a roadmap that an organization should follow to evaluate the value of a TMS? Uh, that's a good point. Um, I can give you some uh, perspectives here I think that are really critical. Uh, the first thing is uh, keep in mind that, again, transportation is, is really a multi-party uh, activity. So whether it's outbound uh, and you're dealing with your uh, your customers, okay, getting those, uh, the value measured at the customer level I think is, is critical. Um, and, uh, and then equally, as I mentioned, driving it and looking at it in terms of things like sales. Um, and even, even, it doesn't always have to be, um, you know, let's call it the classic hard, hardcore numbers. It can be things, particularly when you're dealing with a sales organization uh, or even getting customer feedback, and I'll spend a second on customer feedback is uh, like if you measure complete and on time and you think that that's like the ultimate cu customer uh, feedback, then I'll just say you're missing the point. You know, in the consumer world, remember consumer are, are you know, folks like us buying things as opposed to corporations, uh, you know, they do things like a net promoter score or voice of customer. Um, and the idea behind that is, is what is the perception there? Why does somebody buy from you? And, I'm just going to give people a, a fact. I've tried not to use Amazon in any of my examples here, but one that just blew me away that I saw earlier this year. The Monday before uh, Christmas, Amazon captured 50% of the U.S. online uh, buying market, e-commerce market, people buying for the holidays. All right? Now, think about that for a second. Well, that's an eye-popping number, but why is that? Because most of us know, okay, they focused on being fast, and it put a tremendous amount of effort in being reliable. So what we all want when we're buying that short before a holiday, a birthday, or whatever, is we want to make sure it absolutely gets there. So their brand has now been established around supply chain excellence. And you see this continually in all the things that they're, that they're doing. There are many other companies that are like that. So these are the areas that you really need to start looking at 
when you're trying to value transportation. If you, again, if you're back in the cost mode, only measuring costs, only measuring what I call it simple customer service metrics, you're leaving a lot of, uh, of great value behind there. Now the question is how you go about um, capturing those pieces. This question comes from Tim uh, with a very large pharmaceutical organization. What specific technologies are the leading edge companies investing in? Oh, there's, a, there's, there's not a one does all here. I, I, I'm going to bring up a couple things. Okay, one of them is uh, is is really this whole notion of being uh, uh, addressing their transportation in a in a holistic way. Now, when I say that, there's a lot of lip service to holistic transportation management um, these days. But let me give you an example. There's a couple dimensions there. First dimension is uh, across all the modes. Uh, it might be both inbound and outbound. Uh, it might be a combination of combining inbound and outbound. Uh, it's also a combination of, of whether you have private and dedicated fleet and uh, use commercial carriers. So if you start thinking about all those different things I mentioned, it's really about managing your transportation um, in a single view. Now, as part of that transportation, one of the things to think about is there's that transportation you control and there's transportation that others like your suppliers control. Those are two things also that really are important to bring together. So that's really kind of the first piece. All right? uh, the second piece is around execution. Um, you know, uh, I think everybody knows faster, 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 faster in this particular market here. Well, um, a lot of that's really uh, based on uh, data moving between uh, the partners that make up uh, I'll call it your transportation network or your supply chain network. So being able to get those people to be integrated, to collaborate, and so forth is really, uh, really the, the second um, uh, biggest um, area. And then the last part of it is that I'll bring into it is kind of a variation of the first thing I said, which is to make your your transportation uh, and even your supply chain more customer facing. And what I mean by that is like, what are you doing in the buying process that enables people to more readily buy because you're you're basically making transportation simple for them. You're giving them choices. Uh, you're even providing value-added services, which, by the way, you can go make more money at it. All of those things are things that are really the the, the, the you know the big big player um, activities that are out there today. Going back to the impact of e-commerce, covered it during the presentation. It appears that shippers see more of e-commerce's impact more visible to them than their logistics providers. Uh, why is that the case, or is it the case, and can that change? Uh, yeah, okay, well, can it change? Let's start with the can it change part of it. It can definitely change. It's, um, it's part of it is I would describe as, and as I mentioned in the, in, in the, uh, presentation was that you know a lot of LSPs uh, don't necessarily see the end, end customer community and so they um, so what they're seeing is the uh, what their customers are providing them with uh, you know the measurements and so forth that maybe even contractually and and, and uh, how their relationships are put together so um, you know changing that okay and and uh, uh, you know, bringing in more of the the e-commerce stuff, I think it's going to happen. Okay, it's naturally going to happen here. But it also means, I think, the logistics community to place themselves more at the uh, forefront of their customers' experience. Now, if you're uh, if you're in the home delivery business, as an example, white glove or anything else like that, you're probably already um, somewhere down this road. Um, but um, uh, but if you're not, if you're traditional, you know. Uh, I'll call it B2B transportation organization, you're really probably not seeing what is essentially going to be a tsunami uh, if you look at particularly the growth of e-commerce um, and not just consumer e-commerce, but e-commerce overall. So I think this is something that, again, being aware of what your end customers are really doing and they're facing is probably the best place to get started. Uh, ask you, uh, is intelligence dashboards and reporting seem to be gaining more prominence. Uh, logistics service providers are focusing more time and resources on it. Uh, is there a reason why? And is it being utilized to its fullest potential? Well, I, I think a couple pieces 
uh, need to be uh, really looked at. All right. One of them is uh, there's so much data in transportation. All right, and it actually is reflective of so many different things. And so if, let's go back to my whole notion of being customer facing. All right, you have so much delivery data, whether it's you're doing it or third parties are doing it or whatever, that really can talk about the behavior of customers. When are they ordering? When are they getting things? Are they changing? Uh, you know, uh, deliveries and so forth. There's so much information there that's that's being captured all the time. Uh, if you're trying to understand how to drive costs down, you know, where are you shipping to? Uh, You'd be amazed uh, how many people um, think one thing and find out it's completely different uh, in terms of the volumes and the frequencies and so forth. So there's so much information there. The last part of it is going to be around um, uh, you know, the, the technology that's becoming more and more prevalent. This is the classic big data uh, perspective. And uh, um, you know, there's way more uh, ways to be able to visualize all of this particular data here. So now we're seeing so all those things come together. Now, last point, Mark, you mentioned was, are they using it, exploiting it enough, as much as they can? The answer is no. I think we're really early stage. I was kind of amazed to see how much people were putting importance on it. But if you look at the tools and technology, I think they're not, not quite as far along yet as uh, maybe where people would like them to see. Uh, It seemed in listening to your presentation that cost is not as much of an issue as value creation. Do I have that right? And what I mean by that is can are, are TMS users who get the most out of their systems, you getting it from a full value perspective rather than what would be considered a pure cost reduction play? Uh, you know, maybe I'll position it this way. Cost is such an underlying big current <laughs> in transportation management that um, I think it gets treated as a given. People are going to have to focus on it. I, what I thought was encouraging was a lot more focus on the value creation side. Um, you know, um, so I would say it's a it's that shadowing number two or number three in most organizations where they do have to put a lot of effort into it. Uh, I actually think in a lot of cases there's a tremendous opportunity to blend value creation and cost reduction. It really depends on how people um, you know, look at those two. Uh, there have been studies done that show it, I guess you call it cognitive dissonance between shippers and logistic service providers. Uh, with LSPs thinking that they're doing a bang-up job, where shippers are saying, well, you're doing okay, but there are gaps in the service portfolio. Uh, has that disconnect dissolved at all, or has the gap, perception gap narrowed? Um, you know what I think it is, that to me, it's, it's, again, it's how they're measured. Um, and it also goes, it, it, we could probably spend an hour on this particular part of it. It's really the commercial relationships that they put, that, that the, the two organizations end up putting together. Um, you know, if you're, again, if you're measuring something on some people on complete and on time, uh, then that, and, and that's the primary way they're going to get comp, that, that, guess what, that's what they're going to do. Now, if you said, as I mentioned earlier, is that the most uh, ultimate answer in terms of customer satisfaction? It's no. So if you're saying, well, they're doing an okay job, but they come in and say, well, look, we're 97% on time, okay? But you have an all-day delivery window, as an example, as part of your, you know, your agreement. You're not, there's, you're not being anybody's expectation, right? But that's not, to me, that's not the fault of the LSP. That's the fault of the shipper not necessarily come in and say, that, you know what, we really need to be looking at this more holistically. Um, you know, so I think there's a... <laughs> I think there's a lot about you know how the relationships get structured that really drive that, and sometimes they set themselves up just to be you know disjointed from the beginning. Uh, this question is from Steve, and he writes: Are any shippers using TMS to create a shipping consortium as a way to increase their leverage over LSPs? That's an interesting. One. Yeah, it is. It's a really interesting one, and and and. And Steve, here's what I'm going to say. There's been a number of attempts at doing it, but ultimately, here's what, what where, where it either breaks down or, it, or let's say it gets uh, gated. 
which is what are the you know who shares what piece of the of the pie, right? And uh, you know most shippers are not set up to do that kind of stuff. They're not they're not brokers by themselves. And essentially, what you end up finding is that you end up being a broker. So you can decide you want to be in the uh, transportation brokerage business. Um, and I, I, which, by the way, I think there's you know TMS is involved tremendously to be able to be multi-party and you know those kinds of things. But ultimately. Um, uh, you've got to be able to solve that commercial relationship, and that's why a lot of brokers exist, if you will. They actually are are that consortium. Uh, you know, it wasn't in, let's say they're doing it for themselves. The shippers that use them benefit from it. So, um, you know, it's technically possible, uh, more so, but it's really that commercial relationship that's it's the gating factor. Um, you know, the the one of the bigger issues with TMS. Utilization has been the dramatic cost reductions in the ability to procure it. Has that moved the needle to greater TMS uptake? It's not as expensive as it used to be. That helps, but if you if you look at just the values that were put in, in other words, the responses that were put into this survey said that you know in the 30s percent percent said they didn't really have obstacles. And by the way, not that obstacles can't be overcome, but the others were saying basically not a priority, couldn't get an ROI. Um, so I think it's making it better. I think particularly for small to mid-sized businesses, cloud-based uh, TMS is making it a lot more uh, palatable in terms of you know, financials. But ultimately, it's the where is the savings going to drop out part of it that uh, um, you know, in the transportation itself that's going to justify this. So I think that's where the where the rub really still is, um, and again, it gets back to the metrics that you you've got in place um, and the proof points that you put together, and particularly as you move higher up in the organization um, to get uh, a bigger you know a bigger investment, you really got to then translate into stuff that uh, again the C-suite cares about. Okay. Let me follow up briefly on your question, or excuse me, your answer about not being able to capture an ROI. I've been to conferences where you ask a vendor how much something costs, and they say, well, the ROI is. They don't talk about the cost of it. They talk about the, the speed of the return. Right. If ROI, why is ROI still a problem? Is it something that can be worked out collaboratively? Is it, a, is it the shipper not providing enough information to the vendor? Or even the LSP to for the vendor to make a determination on how fast the payback will occur. Um, let's break it down into a couple things. One is uh, called believability. All right. Uh, some, and I'm not. This is <laughs> being a vendor and and you know in in this market for quite a long time. I'm actually all sides of this equation. Um, uh, a lot of it is you you can say hey here's we could save. Uh, 25% a year uh, on your transportation. Now, you know, it may show it in, let's say, in, in some kind of small study or whatever. But the, the, you know, the proof that that it's going to be sustainable is a big deal. So when people make an investment, even in cloud technology, cloud is not free. You you sign up and you you you're going to pay for it, right? Um, uh, but you've got to be able to make sure that you know through the ups and downs, you're going to get your your results, right? So that's always a challenge for people. The second one is how do you model it? Um, uh, again, as part of this whole notion of believability, um, you know, wh which, you know, what is the typical conditions you run under, and where do the, for instance, consolidation opportunities happen, or how do you cut days out of your transportation cycle? You know, those are things that, uh, um, you know, um, this is where, where companies struggle, and you know, I would say that there's a there's a huge consulting community out there that does a really pretty good job at helping people try to bridge those pieces. But I, I think that those are still significant for folks, and um, and the fact that transportation is probably as the technology is more cost effective than ever is a real benefit. But they're still struggling with those first two things. Well, on that note, uh, I want to thank Chris, and I want to thank our uh, attendees. Um, it was a very informative hour and a very, very important subject. Uh, for more information on this webcast, please visit any of the resource links that are open before you. And again, 
want to thank everybody for attending today's webinar, hosted by DC Velocity, sponsored by Descartes System. And shortly after this live event, we will send you an email reminder to access this presentation on demand. So on behalf of our guest, Chris Jones, CVP Marketing and Services for Descartes Systems, my name is Mark Solomon. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.